I want to read, uh, uh, actually, my, we're just going to read verse 11, the First Chronicles chapter 29. Verse 11, First Chronicles chapter 29. It says, Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as a head above all. Amen. You can be seated. There are three facts that we need to remember about God's control. And number one is because God is in control, he has a plan for your life. He has a plan for my life. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. You know, many times people plan and live their lives without given any thought of God's plan or plans for their lives. And you would think this was to be expected by those that are, uh, that are of the world and are lost, but not Christians. But as Christians, we should seek the, the perfect will of God for our lives, and, and that's not always the case. We think we know best most of the time. But we need to, you know, seek his perfect will. And there are many that plan and live their lives as though God didn't exist or even have a plan for their lives. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 21 says, There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. So when we plan ahead, we need to plan ahead with the eyes and our heart toward God. How many plan well in advance for vacations? I do. I do. I plan well. I try to map everything out. And uh, But there's so many that do that, but yet they don't plan in their walk with God to be ready for when he comes. We don't plan, uh, we, do, we just want to do our own thing, and we don't think about God's plans for our lives. And, uh, but, you know, we make plans, uh, but God has the last word. Amen. Uh, how many of you ever had God change your plans? And if we're honest, we kind of got upset about it. He changes them often. And most of the time, he changes them because he wants to put you back on that path of his plan in your life. And uh, when he changes them, even though we get mad or upset, it's God looking out for us and letting you know that, hey, this plan is going to work better. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have goals or we shouldn't make plans. We should make plans. I mean, we've already started making plans for next year, things at the church, ministers lined up and everything. But when we make plans, we should make our plans counting on God to direct us. I mean, he, he should always have the first say in everything. And the more mature we become as a believer, the more flexible we become and the more open we are to change. And we're open to that change so we can become who God wants us to become. Amen. Why? Because we realize how little we know. You know, the older I get, the more I realize how much I don't know. <laughs> how much I don't know. You know, when I was 16, I knew everything. When I was 21, I knew everything. And my mom knew nothing. She didn't know anything. <laughs> but it's amazing how smart my mom got by the time I was about 27, 28 years old. Amen. 
Uh, so, and sometimes, you know, we, we're laughing, and that is funny, but sometimes we treat God the same way. That's right. We, we treat him the same exact way. We think we know it all. We've got everything worked out. We've got this planned out and that planned out. And, no, God, you don't know what's best for me. And I'm getting a deer in the headlight, but if we're honest, that's the truth. And that's a lot of times we get ourselves in trouble. And my plans are better than yours, but that's not what the Bible says. His plans are greater than our plans. Amen. And uh, but but make your plans. Make your plans for next week, next month, next year. But when you make those plans, the key into that is to cooperate with God. Amen. I mean, have made plans for. Christmas already, things going on. But how many of us have actually consulted with God with these plans? They, see, when we don't consult God with our plans to see if it's, you know, it's in His, if it's in His uh, uh, plan for us, that's when we start in our mind beginning to think that God is not in control, or we begin to take over and think we're in control. God help y'all if I was in control. <laughs> I will be, never mind. But, but we need to pray about our plans. Pray about it. And we should make our plans counting on God to direct us. You ought to say, Lord, what do you want me to do? When's the last time we asked God that? What do you want me to do? We probably don't. And we just go ahead and make out those plans. But what do you want me to do, Lord? I think sometimes we don't say, what do you want me to do? Or ask, what do you want me to do, Lord? Because we're afraid of what he's going to say. <laughs> you're going to bust my bubble, God. You're gonna, this, this is going to be a fun time. And you're going to tell me, no, we got, amen? It's all quiet in here now. Amen. Brother Barber used to say, you can hear a mouse licking ice over there in the corner. <laughs> But what do you want me to do? And one of the prayers, you know, I, I, I probably play, uh, prayed uh, a lot is, God, what do you want me to do? How can I best serve you? How can I serve you, God? And yes, we're still talking about God being in control. He is in control. But, but we've got to understand that. We've, we've got to make sure he's at the forefront of all our plans. We've got to make sure he's at the forefront and directs us in our plans. I've been doing this a long time. I've been doing this for this and that. And I know what I'm doing. Really? Come on. Are we afraid to ask God? So how can I best serve you, God? So that's the first thing about him being in control. The second thing, because God is in control, he has a purpose for my problem. He has a purpose for my problem. And Genesis 50, verse 20 but as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. And then Romans 8 and 28 says, And we know all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Life is not a series of random events with no meaning or accidents that just just come and go. Amen? Life has a meaning. Life has a purpose. And as a believer, nothing comes into our life without God's permission. Amen? And everything that happens in your life, even the bad things, is God-filtered. Just go read the book of Job. Amen? So it's God filtered. It can't come into your life without permission. It can't come into your life without permission. Your problems have a purpose. God now God does not cause your problems. He doesn't He don't have to cause our problems. I mean, you know we do a pretty good job on our own. We do a pretty good job on our own, amen. Uh, but, but he does permit them. And he does use them for good in our lives. 
And in the whole, the picture, the grand design, and the greater scheme of things, if we cooperate with his plans, if we trust him, we will understand that he is in complete control yes. with everything. Sometimes we don't like how he controls things, right? That's right. You know, but, but he is in complete control. So we've got to We've got to cooperate with his plan. We've, we've got to learn to trust him. And if we maintain the right attitude through the trials and tribulations that we go through, God will work all things out to our good, but not just our good here on this earth, but for our eternal good. Amen? And, and, and I've always said this. I believe sometimes we go through trials, not all the time, but sometimes we go through trials and valleys and tribulations because we're trying to avoid God's plan. We're trying to do things on our own. And so we just we just got to learn to give it all over to him. Um, you know, he will use our problem to get you, to get me in the right position that he wants us in. And this is all, none of this is punishment. None of this is, is, is just, you know, you might think it is a punishment or a chastisement, but it's all because God loves you so much. He don't want to see you go to a place that was not created for you. He wants to keep you on that right path. And uh, so, so he corrects us and he, he you know, he, he uses those problems, those problems to put us in the right position with him. And he will also use our problems to get us to the place that he has designed for us in our life. Every place that he puts us in or places us in was designed for us from the very beginning. Uh, you know, before we was even born, our paths have been designed already. God is in control of every little thing and our problems. We don't often see our problems this way, but our problems are opportunity to see God's power work in our hearts, in our lives, in our families. That, that's where our problems are opportunity to see that. First Peter chapter one, verse six and verse seven says, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perish though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. What is Peter saying? He is saying that the trials and the troubles that we're going through, they're not accidents. They're not accidents. They are actually divine appointments arranged by God to prove the, the quality and the character and the strength of our own faith. Joseph said, you meant it for bad, but God meant it for good. Look at Joseph. His brothers uh, cheated him. His brothers mistreated him. His brothers, they even sold him to slavery. He even ended up being uh, accused falsely of rape and thrown into prison for a crime that he did not commit. All kinds of bad things happened to Joseph. That's right. But when all those things were going on, God was working in all those things. He was working in it. And, and here comes Joseph, and through all that, he ends up second in command in Egypt. And he saves his country, and he even saves Egypt. And he says to his brothers later, you meant it for evil, you meant it for bad, but God meant it for good. So that's the way we need to approach our problems. And if we approach those problems that way, we will understand that God is in control. How many of us want to see or want to understand and acknowledge God is in control going through some of the things that Joseph had to went through? Or some of the things that Job had to go through? So we really don't have it bad at all when you think of those two. Amen. So, you know, the devil's always coming in and he's always trying to talk to you, get in your ear, and uh, just tell you, all, tell you all kinds of crazy things. 
Amen. So, so what is the key to my response to the problems? If I know God is in control and he has a plan for my life and he has a purpose for my problems, what is my response? Let's read 2 Corinthians 4, 17 through 18. It says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us as far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So this is the reason we never lose heart. And when you hear lose heart, it means never to get to a point that you're so discouraged that you want to give up. So we never lose heart. That's what that means. And, and these troubles that we're going through, they are temporary. But while they are temporary, they are winning us over for things that are going to be permanent or things that are going to be eternal. Amen. Everything that's down here is temporary. Nothing down here is going to last. Amen. So they're, they're getting us ready for something that's permanent, for something that's glorious, for something that's solid, for that great reward. Yes. When Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you can be there with me also. Yes. Amen. Amen. So, so that, you know, that is, there's purpose in our problems. There, there's uh, things that go on in our life that God, it's all part of God's big plan for our lives. And we don't like it. But at the end, we're going to thank him for it. Amen. Yes, amen. At the end, going through these can help us enter into that great reward. So the correct, res the correct response to the problems we go through is to look past the pain of now and see God's ultimate purpose and that is to hear, well done, thy good and faithful. Amen. Right. So, so, so let's look past the pain that we see right now. But oftentimes that pain seems to be larger than anything else. Not because it's physically hurting, but it's just overbearing. It's overwhelming. Yes. But, but we've got to look past that and see God's okay. ultimate purpose for us. And the third thing, because God is in control, my prayers will be answered. Because he's in control, my prayers will be answered. Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Prayers are not a waste of time. They are not a waste of time. They make a difference. Your prayer makes a difference. That's right. No matter how small it may seem, if it's sincere, it makes a difference. Amen? And sometimes Satan will start whispering, well, he'll start whispering in my ear, nobody's hearing this. God's not listening. You're wasting your time. Your, your prayer is not, is not going any further than the ceiling. You're just, you're just, you know, you're just counting yourself. You're, you're psyching yourself up. It, all this is is just, just a trick. Prayer doesn't work. It's just mumbo jumbo. It's just a waste of time. Satan never do that to you. Yeah. If you're living for God. He does it to you. Amen. If he hasn't done it to you, you need to check your walk with God. But prayer works. Why? Because God is in control. Ever prayed over something you thought that it was just impossible, but you prayed anyway? <laughs> just seemed too large for, you know, I, I mean, let me be just transparent. I, God, I don't know if you can handle this. <laughs> Um, I hope I'm not the only one, but I, God, I don't know if you can handle this one. You know, but he's in control. And if God were not in control, then sure, our prayers would be a waste of time. But he's in complete control. And because God is in control, he can control 
what we think is uncontrollable. He is in full control, church. And, and, and that's the basis of all our miracles. And that's, that's God's sovereignty. And, and I'm thankful for his sovereignty. I'm thankful that he's in control. I'm thankful that when I make my own life miserable, he loves me enough. Yes. I always like to say he palms top of my head and just says, hey, you know. And, uh, you know, and it, it's this freedom that just shows me how much he still truly loves me. Yes. And his love is never weak and his love is never diminished for me. Of all the people that's in the world, you know, Brother Brandon sings that song, he knows my name. Of all the people that's in this world, when I get on my knees and when I call on him, he doesn't just hear me. He doesn't just hear that voice, but he knows who that voice belongs to. Yes, and he knows my name. That, that's my son, Kenneth. That's my son, Brandon. That's, you know, he knows your name. It's not just another voice. It's not like us hearing voices in our head. <laughs> he knows. Right. Can you think of the millions of people that are praying at any given time? Right. And he knows each voice by name. How can you not think God is in control? That's right. How can you not think? I mean, we are engraved in the palm of his hands. He is in control. You know, one thing about God, though, if he wants to overrule nature, he can. That's how controlled he is. If he wants to overrule a human law, he can. That's how much in control he is. If he wants to overrule a government, he can. He can do whatever he wants to do. But you know, I'm so glad that he decided he would love me. Yes, man. I'm just so glad he decided he would love me that when I do fail, he'll be there to pick me up. He'll be there every time with open arms, not worrying about what I did. You asked forgiveness, I, that's it. He forgot about everything I've ever done. So, I, you know, I'm thankful that, that that is what he has chosen to do. He can do whatever he wants to do, but he chooses to love me. Yes, he chooses you. to care for me. He chooses to chastise me when I'm doing wrong. Thank you, Jesus. He chooses to check my heart when I when I be maybe getting to lean toward a wrong spirit or or, or lean toward something that I, that I know is not of God. He chooses to check that and say, "Hey, you know that's not you know." And so that's how much in control he is, and I'm thankful for that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And. Uh, and this ought to give us the confidence that we have, uh, or we should have that confidence when we approach God. That if we ask anything according to his will, right. he will hear us. He hears us. He hears all our murmuring and complaining too. Well, I didn't speak it. It don't matter. He, <laughs> he, knows, what you, he knows your thoughts. Amen. But he loves you anyway. That ought to amaze some of us. He knew, he knew what I was thinking today, but yet he still loves me. So this, this is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. Church, we need to acknowledge his control over our lives. Now, he's not one that has a thumb over on you. He's given us free will. But he will nudge us. Say, hey, this is not. Have you ever done anything and right in the middle of it, you're thinking, something ain't right. Yeah. That's God. He's showing you how much control he has. Yes. I'm pricking your mind, I'm pricking your thoughts, I'm pricking your heart. He could have just laughed upside the head. But he didn't. He, he pricks our thoughts and our hearts. And so, so we need to acknowledge his control over our life. Don't fight it. Don't run from it and don't resist it. He's in control of everything. Oftentimes we go to bed worried about things that we have, we have no control over. No control over. 
I mean, you know they will say, hey, just give it to God. He's not going to sleep anyway. But let's acknowledge his control. Don't fight it. Don't run from it. Don't resist it. And accept it. Cooperate with it. See, we can say the words, I accept it. But when it comes to cooperating with it, our words don't match our actions. And be grateful for it. Yes. That's another hard one. Be grateful for his corrections. Yes. Amen. But enjoy the blessing of it. And thank God for it. Thank God for the control that he has over our lives. Let him control the uncontrollable. That's hard to do, isn't it? Yes. But let him control the uncontrollable because God is in control of everything. So let him control the uncontrollable and stop worrying about it. Well, Stuart, that's easy to say. You're right, it's easy to say. Chances are we lay down tonight. Some of us ain't gonna remember anything I said tonight <laughs> because the troubles are gonna be this big. The worry is gonna be this big, but God is still in control. God is still in control. Some of us spend a lot of time worrying about things that we have no control over when we should be talking to the one who is in control of all things. He's in control. So let's learn to trust God. If we would learn to trust God completely, yes. and we would have uh, peace, and we would have confidence, and we would have hope, and we would know God is in control. Amen. If I if, if I ask each of you tonight, what is your biggest worry? Chances are something you can't control. Something you cannot control. But you're letting that worry hinder you in a lot of areas. And if we're not careful, that worry will begin to take a toll on our health. So let's, let's give everything to God tonight. And understand that he is in complete control. Not one thing catches him by surprise. Not one thing catches him off guard. He knows it all. And he's in control of everything. God bless you. Would you stand tonight? Ask according to his will. He'll hear you. Whatever your worry is tonight, whatever you're allowing to dominate your thoughts, why don't you just give it to God? Just give it over to him. And let him show you that he has everything in control.